Alright guys, so today I want to talk to you guys about the research. Now, a few of you that are new to the game are probably wondering what the hell is with the research? What, what am I trying to do? What is the goal here? And the goal of the research is to essentially learn the recipes to craft the items in the game. So, for example, I, I already have tier 3 research, which is important, I'll explain later. So you'll start in the game, have one research uh, open. Now, to do anything, you have your signature weapons. Your signature weapons are your character's main weapon. It's what you're going to be able to craft right off the bat at level two uh, with your green armor. So, and here I main Valora. Valora's signature weapon is the Devastator. Now, when you start playing this game, these characters will already have their uncommon signature weapon unlocked. So you don't have to worry about it. Um, but you can see with the rest of them, Halden's another with his strike rifle. Now as leveling up your research, you'll start to unlock better versions of their signature weapons. So from Tarek's long striker to the XTI, Kali's uh, heart seeker over to the heart seeker Cerberus and so on and so on and so on. Now moving back into the research though, I want to explain to you wildcard weapons. Wildcard weapons are on your loadout. So going through your explorer, you'll pick your main character. All explorers can have different loadouts. And for example, my Valara. She's got her signature devastator up here. I don't have the EXT unlocked yet. And by through the research, I will unlock that. But it takes time. And it takes a fair amount of grinding. This is no simple thing that you can do in a week each one of these is a recipe that you will always have unlocked and they will take time so you have to bear with it now as far as wildcard weapons go yeah quicksilver sidekick these are your uncommons argonaut uh the ef1 microburst the snow piercer the war song uh currently i have the war song unlocked i spent the materials i've gathered in game to unlock it with blueprints and now i forever have it so on my target, I placed it here. This is where your wildcard weapons are. So in game, as you're accumulating scrap, you are gonna have the ability to make these weapons. Now, depending on the weapon's rarity, depends on what level you will be able to craft this thing. So I don't just get to say, oh, I've got an opus and I can craft an opus right out the gate. No, no, you gotta be level four. Level two to craft green, level three to craft blue, level four craft purple and I'm assuming once we have tier 5 or level 5 weapons in this game you will have to be level 5 and so on now going back into the research this is I've explained signature I've explained wild card your throwables you will see more on mine than yours in the beginning you will probably just see the mark 29 frag uh, possibly even the proxima now as you research level gets higher you will learn to craft any of these as you can see, I don't even have any of these things crafted yet, and I've been playing this game for well over a week now. It, it will take time. But, moving on. So, we have, in the items, the bandages. They're great, quick, it's a heal over time, it doesn't instantly heal. The thermal boost, I recommend building a thermal boost as soon as you can. This is what's going to help you uh, fight the storm. So if you get stuck in the storm, it's going gonna, it's gonna to start ravaging your thermal meter and you will need these each one of these will give you 50 percent of your thermal meter back and i can't express how important any of these are to have and even if you're just on the field you can't find a fire you need to be able to craft one of these they're cheap they're only a hundred salvage to make two and i i can't express how much how important these are don't be like me i went after this I spent the resources to create an ammo crate. <laughs> uh, I can't tell you how big of a letdown this thing was. It needs to be fixed. Um, when you pop an ammo crate, you do not get max ammo. You get one ammo, or uh, one clip almost, of every weapon type. So you have your light ammo, your bow, or your arrows, your medium, your heavy, all uh, and so forth. And this will give you one of every. Not one, just one clip so it's not really worth it and it's expensive to craft it craft this first aid kit 
it's recommended. It is an instant heal, it takes about three seconds to pop off. You will gain about 80% of your meter back. It's helpful. Biofoam, amazing. I love biofoam. It's fast, it gives you a bit back, and it gives you heal over time. I love the biofoam. It's a uh, on the run heals. I, I wish I knew what tier four was, I'm still working on that. So moving off from items, let's head over into the talents. Now the talents, the wild card weapons, and the signature weapons. And these are gonna be the most important. Now, ranging from probably your wild card weapon first, to your talent second, to your signature weapon, once you have the ability to unlock it, I would definitely go after your signature weapon. It is going to make it much more powerful. And it's gonna give you the edge over other teams that just haven't gotten there yet, or Valora versus Valora. Well, I'll tell you what, the EXT will give me an advantage over fighting another Valora. So there is a reason to go after these, save up for them. They do take a butt. I will explain how the components work here shortly and the materials. But the talents. Each character has a set of talents that only by unlocking the next research upgrade that you can even see what they are. Currently, I have only unlocked Valora's power reroute. I haven't unlocked anything else. And you start off with the four base ones. Valora's, the one I have unlocked, Power Reroute, allows me to see the next stage. Now, uh, I have both of these checkmarked, but after you go back to Valora, you can only see that you can have one selected in each category. You have aggressive, defensive, movement, and utility. Now, so currently, my old defensive was resistance to cold increased by 30%. It's not bad. But... As combat scenarios go, this was better. Activating your ability triggers shield recovery for you and nearby allies. So if I am just taking a shit pile of damage and I have to either heal or get ready for a push, I can pop my bubble, I can shoot from my bubble, I am healing inside of my bubble, recovering my shields, and it is, uh, utility-wise, I, I can't live without it. It's amazing. So, the talents are important uh they are going to change your gameplay drastically just just that simple one changed how i fight and going through these later i mean read them very carefully choose which one you're going to make first because they aren't easy to make uh the components required to the materials required uh, these take time to get so prioritizing which things you need to work on first like such as picking the best uh, wild card weapon. Wild card. I picked Warsong. It's a it's a level three schematic. Uh, as soon as I hit level three, I can start to build it if I have the scrap. The Warsong is a good gun. It is a three round burst AR. Takes uh, medium rounds, and I love it. It hits for around eleven a shot each shot, so up to about thirty three on hit. Now. I would say my playstyle best fits the Argonaut. The Argonaut is a automatic AR, similar to the damage the Warsong puts out, but it's just that automatic, the fact that I'm not constantly tracking and clicking, I can just hold the button down and track them. It, it makes a, a big difference for me. So I have to go back and craft it. And as you can see, I'm one ceramic away from picking up the Argonaut. So uh, don't sleep on it, it's a good gun. Uh, it would be one of my first priorities on top of going back and first getting that thermal boost. Now, so we've covered talents, items, throwables, wildcard weapons, and signature weapons. What we haven't really been covering is uh, your research level. Your research level, you'll start off with just this box. Now, inside of this box, you're going to be able to craft things like this is where your Quicksilver will go. If I start to craft this right now, it'll go up into that box. And... As time goes on, you can unlock higher levels. So currently, if I want to unlock tier four, I require to complete 20 research projects. That takes time. That is going to take a bit. And once I've unlocked this, I will see the components ready. Forget about the little uh, qubit processor. When this unlocks with 20 projects completed, you will see a new list of required items. It did for tier three. Tier three was 10 projects completed. And as you can see, required one wire, lens, steel, ceramic, and chemical salt. Uh, different mounts varying on each one. So, let's go back. 
Sounds like at this point, we need to explain resources and components. Now in the game, I've been playing for a while and you can see what I have currently. Level one, when you start off in the game, uh, any salvage you pick up in, uh, in the game, you can only carry one salvage item that you're going to take with you from the game back to the station. Now, if your team makes it far enough, I believe you just have to reach the extraction phase. I think if you extract, everybody shares their salvage. So it, it becomes important to extract because now you're not looking at one item. You're looking at three to four, depending on, I think you get an extraction reward. You also get your teammates uh, salvage that they picked up and you share yours as well. So the difference is instead of leaving with whatever you had in you, on you, you get to have access to your whole teams. And that's when things like the Scourge Seed that you pick up from the boss or the Orbital Debris uh, is really important. So going into this, your, your first research levels, you're gonna be looking at Collagen, Copper, Crystallized hyd Hydrate, let me make sure I can say the word, Graphite, iron alloy, minerals, petroleum, plant fiber, and radioactive isotope. Notice that's an epic material. It, take, it, it's, it takes, it's harder to find it. Excuse my stuttering. But I will say the most important, and not that you can really get it any easier, is the iron alloy. You just require so much of it. Everything I do requires iron alloy, it feels like. So I'm always searching for this. Now, you notice as I have my cursor on it, you're looking at something on the right that says research, zero seconds, materials, nanites, 69 out of 100. Every bit of salvage you bring back is going to probably drop you some nanites. Nanites are like a micro currency in the research area, meaning that some things require 200 nanites, 300 for rare, and up to 500 for epic. Um, nanites... You don't get too many of them. You maybe pull five, you maybe pull four, you might get lucky pull 11 out of a package, but say you complete a match and you pull four packages and you manage to pull, uh, let's give a number, 30 nanites from that whole thing. That's, a, that's quite a bit. That's not even an actual third of what it would cost to make one iron alloy. So in my opinion, the nanites, they could buff the amount that, that we receive. Uh, it would feel a little better. It would feel like I'd be able to kind of close the gap on some of those harder to find materials or, or materials that I'm using much more of. So, anyways, moving on. These levels are tier 2. You will not receive tier 2 materials until you have this unlocked. Which brings me back to this. Unlocking your tiers research is priority. If you have the ability to find the components and materials to unlock it, unlock it. Because now, when you leave a match, you have access to this row of materials that you can get from any of that salvage. So instead of just getting this, you get this. Or you can get this at tier three. So these are things like your chemical salt, your chit and your glass, your healthy uh, germ plasm, keratin, meteoric alloy, uh, musk gland, pigment, rare earth magnet. So I get all of these now uh, it, 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 it just creates a better loot pool for uh, salvage that you bring back. And it also increases the amount that you get, it felt like. It felt like originally I was getting maybe like three or four things out of an item. Now that I'm tier three, it feels like I get like a, a list of items that come out. So much that you don't even see it all. Now, <clears throat> moving on into tier three. I wish I had tier four and five unlocked for you guys to show you. But um, you're starting to get the hang of it at this point, I'm sure. But we need to move over to components. Components after in uh, when you go into tier two are going to unlock this. This is tier two only. You won't have these originally. This is going to be things that you can craft that are going to be required later. The reason I say iron alloy is so important for me, at least, is because I'm constantly crafting steel. Steel requires 19 iron alloy and some graphite. Now I've got the graphite, excuse my voice. I've got the graphite. But what I also need it for is ceramic. And what you'll need the steel for later is things like the tier three 
um, the lightweight frame. Uh, as you can see, there's another two steel there. Ergonomic stock, which I've made two of. Actually, take that back. I've not made these. I have found these. And yes, these components can be found in packages. They are rare. I have not made anything out of this level yet. I have found this, and I have found two of these. It's unfortunate. I wish I had found these. I need these badly. So I'm working to make these as well. So your original materials will eventually move on to allow you to create these. And these will then, in turn, allow you to make this. And it it's... I can't explain that it, it's... Um, the grind in this game for the research, it feels heavy. Uh, I didn't like it at first, but seeing what these weapons are capable of doing, these talents, it really gives you an edge having that. Some people are going to disagree with the fact that in the game, the people that have been playing the longest are going to have access to the higher tier levels and are obviously going to have better stuff in the game. You are correct, but don't worry. There are ways to combat that in the game. Your strategy... Uh, where you go, uh, our, um, weapon areas on the map, points of interest, have chances of dropping these blue weapons. These aren't only achievable through here. I see every one of these weapons dropping in the game. Care packages. I just picked up a predator out of one of them. I don't even have it unlocked. So it evens the playing field. It just allows for you to craft it on your own. If you really like the Opus, I've seen people using it. I use it. I like it. It's a hard hitting. It's fast shooting. Um, and instead of me having to hope I get it out of a care package, I have the ability to craft it as soon as I hit level four. That's all this is. It's to help you. But remember, everything that you unlock here, you're going to be able to put here. So currently on my Valora, I really need to get a better grenade. I'm just after her signature weapon right now, so I'm waiting until I can. But that's that's all this is. This is, this is your talent, your utility items, which honestly stuff like this should be switched back over to that. That'll and work. Now, with all that explained, your salvage down here is where you will go to deconstruct anything that you've brought back from the game. Uh, it's going to show you what you've earned. It's it's RNG based. Uh, certain packages have certain items such as you'll find uh, frozen rabbits on the ground petrified bodies they they typically might have minerals plant fiber still in them stuff like that but what you won't find in something like that is iron alloy of course it's it's an organic material or like a biomass from the scourge you know you're, you're probably not going to be finding iron alloy so if you're really in the market for iron alloy you're going to be looking for orbital drops or the satchels that the uh, that the cannibals have those uh, tribes, they drop satchels from their bosses. Those are going to be things you're looking for. So there is a reason to search for certain things. So picking up a rabbit every game or a biomass, yeah, you're probably going to stay low on iron alloy, and you're going to get rich in these other areas. Which, <laughs> if you can tell, I've already done this. Uh, so now I'm, I'm, I'm starting to understand what I'm looking for, pay attention to what comes out of the salvage, and you'll get a better understanding of what you really need to go after whenever you get into the game. Remember, you only get to carry one out. So it's important that you get the one you want, as well as communicate with your team that, hey, maybe uh, if nobody's looking for anything in particular, that you say, hey, I've got a satchel already. We should go get some orbital debris. I really need some iron alloy. And if they agree, then make sure you extract. You'll get what they pick up. And that's how you maximize some of this. So if nobody's really looking for something on their own, just communicate with your team. Say, hey, I'm really in need of iron alloy. So when we go in, if you guys don't mind picking up satchels or going after orbital debris, that would be a big help. And you'd, you'd be surprised. Your team will help you out. So after that, I've got components explained we got your materials how things unlock your research levels what they're going to do how important those are and remembering that these are all just blueprints that you can now take into the game and they're craftable so i hope this helped i hope this explained this a little bit this was kind of confusing at first and yes the game is still in early access i'm not going to tell you this is the best system i i like what they're doing though uh, I think some things could be tweaked. Uh, I'd like to see new additions added, 
new talents, obviously, new characters added later that you're going to have to keep farming materials to get their signature weapons crafted and to get their talents crafted. There's going to be a lot that you are going to be going after in this game. And this is really going to be a key point here. Um, this is kind of going to keep people in the game. This is going to be something that they're going to have to put a lot of effort in to make sure people are happy with how this goes. Um, because it almost is the most important part. You know, your extraction is going to decide how much salvage you receive. Uh, going into the game, ultimately you're trying to pull something out of here, collect as much data, and get out with some salvage on you. That way you can go and craft better items, better things to get your hands on in-game to give you that edge over other players. So, like I said, I hope this helped explain how the research in this game works and gives you a better understanding of what you're looking at as soon as you come in here because I, I was a little overwhelmed with it at first. I didn't, it, it wasn't very self-explanatory until I had spent several games kind of figuring out what can be done. And I'm sure later on in the game, cosmetics, that's that's another thing that they're going to add that's going to give you um, more things to chase after, reasons to get into that game, drop in and get your salvage, get out. Um, so this game, like I said, is in early access. I'm really excited to see what they do with this system. I, I hope they go far with it. It has been a blast so far. I'm going to keep playing. And maybe once I hit tier five, I'll make another video showing you guys what the tier four, the tier five, and everything unlocked looks like and give you an idea where you're heading. So thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate all the support that you guys give me on doing these things. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you want any more. Thank you.